Hello everyone, welcome to TNE Garage. Today we'll be unlocking the DME or ECU on my BMW with the M-Link DME Unlocker from Mission Tuning, which is this little guy right here. Most modern BMWs, their DMEs are locked from the factory that require either a bench unlock or a femto unlocked, depending on when the car is produced. Note that this M-Link device only currently works with vehicles that are produced before June 2020 and anything after that require a femto unlocked. And let's take a moment to talk about how the M-Link works to unlock your DME. So this is your DME cover. Underneath, it's going to be six plugs or connectors in total connected to your DME that we'll have to remove and then we'll be able to connect our M-Link device, which has two terminals to be connected to the DME. The red one that you see, or the red indicator that you see, the plug is going to the first terminal, which is at the front of the car. And the other one's gonna go to the fifth terminal, which is the second last towards the back of the car. And after we get the two terminals from the M-Link to be connected with the DME, we'll get some sort of power bank to power up the M-Link and then to get a phone or a laptop to be connected to the Wi-Fi network emitted by the M-Link to unlock the DME from there. So let's just get started. Although this step is optional, it's highly advised for you to disconnect the battery before you unplug any DME connectors at the front of the car. And also optional, but highly advised is to wrap some kind of microfiber towel at your trunk latch just in the event of the trunk getting slammed shut. Mine specifically is a power trunk. There will be no way for me to open the trunk back up to easily connect the terminal back on. So I have to climb from the cabin of my car towards the trunk and connect the battery post once again. And that's why it's advised for you to wrap a rag over the trunk latch and not like this will do. After that, we're just going to disconnect the battery by removing the negative terminal from the negative post of the battery. Flip it aside, and we are going to wait about 15 minutes to let the power dissipate. This is to ensure the DME is not going to get any power while we're removing it, or else you might get some kind of funny cold. And this is what I've done. I have removed the cable from the negative post from the battery and wrap a towel over it as well, just to add safety that it's not going to touch the negative post to connect the DME once again. After we've done so, like I said, I'm just going to let the power to dissipate for about 15 minutes and we'll come back to undo the six connectors connecting to the DME and proceed to the next step. While we're waiting for the 15 minute window to pass, I think it's time for us to start working on the DME cover to get it removed. There are three rubber grommets holding the DME cover in place. And you just want to gently yank the cover upward to get it removed. And also be mindful there is a colon line going up top on the DME cover. You don't want to yank that one off too and try to wiggle it and get the line all the way so that you don't yank on it. And just like that, voila, the DME cover is removed. And I'm gonna flip to the underside. This is the one that's holding down up top. And then these two are the one holding down at the bottom by the rubber grommet on the DME bracket. I'm gonna pick up the camera and show you so this and this, these two are the rubber ground that I'm talking about. This is the one that's up top. And now that the cover is removed, you can see what I have been referencing about the six DME connectors. As well, you can see this coolant line or some kind of holes that's going up top on the DME cover. Be mindful when you are removing the cover. Fast forward to this clip so that I can give you a better visual of how to remove the DME connectors. All six of them are the same way. And this is one of the two terminals from the M-Link device. They are constructed the same as OEM. So you press on this locking tab, you can see right here. We'll have to press on it 
gently and after it's loose you can guide the bracket all the way out and then you should be able to remove the connector from the DME with no pressure applied. We're going to use the same method I showed you earlier to get all six of the DME connectors to be removed from the car so that we can proceed to our next step to get it unlocked. It should go out smooth like butter. If you needed to use brute force for whatever reason, stop because most likely you're doing something wrong. It's likely that the unlock bracket is not all the way out. That's why you cannot get it removed. You should not need to use any force whatsoever when you are getting removed. Worth noting that you may notice some masking tape wrap around the harnesses. Those are indicating to myself uh, which terminal those harness goes onto to ease me on the reinstallation process. You may want to do the same just to be on the safe side. They are pin specific, so they will not go into another slot unless you bend them on purpose. And since all six of the connectors has the same mechanism to be removed, I'm just going to fast forward at this point. It's not difficult to get the connectors to be removed by any means, but you will just have to guide them through this spaghetti of mess. And that's why I think it's important to note down the harness number of which terminal it goes back into. And now that all six of them are out, we're just going to grab our M-Link. The red indicator is telling you this is going to the first terminal, which is the first one towards the front of the car and it's just going to be in reverse order how we pull it out. We're just going to align the pins, also visually checking the pins are supposed to be uh, of its layout. And once you press it in, you can see the brackets start flipping upward automatically. And after it's pushed in all the way, very, very gently, you don't want to mess up the pins. We're just going to lock it by pulling it up of the bracket goes the same way for the other connector that goes onto the fifth one but while i was visually inspecting it uh, the pin layout is the other way around for whatever reason so we're just going to plug the connector in this way so flip it the other way around but essentially it's going to be the same process and at this point it's plugged in so just give it a light tug to make sure it's secured after that, we're just going to power up the M-Link device with a power bank. And this is what I got from a bundle from Mission Tuning. So just plug it in, which is a USB-C connection, power up the power bank and set the M-Link aside. At this point, get your laptop or your phone to be connected to the M-Link Wi-Fi as well as go on to this website, mlink.local, it'll lead you to this interface. Um, as soon as you get it connected, it will run through the five uh, requirements to make sure you have the stable connection. At this point, you can see I have a super license to be redeemed. Uh, that's what I bought from the M-Link device. So I'm just going to redeem my super license. That means I'll have the option to back it up of the current DME state as well as to recover to the current DME state as well as to unlock the DME. So at this point, I'm just going to back up uh, the current state so that in the events where it bricked, I'm just going to have a uh, backup to be recovered from. And I got a little bit impatient. As you can see, I just jumped right ahead to when I backed it up. It took about four to five minutes in case you're wondering. After you back up your DME, it's going to give you a prompt where to save it. I just save it onto my iCloud just so I have constant access. And after I back up the DME of its current state, of course, that's where the fun starts. Uh, it's going to kick you back out to the main menu to check for the five requirement once again. And then we're going to get it unlocked. So once you click on it, it gets you to this window. And once we click on start unlock, it'll take about 15 seconds or so. I am going to run it in real time so that you can see how fast it actually is to get your DME unlocked. Mm. 
there you go your dme is now unlocked and you can flash any tune on it as you desire no matter what the platform is whether it be mhd whether it be bm3 or any other platform that you wish to get your car tuned on after you get your dme to be unlocked it's really up to you on when to get your car to be tuned with any platform that you wish but for me i'm just going to reverse everything that i've done and talk about why i went with m link from mission tuning Mind you, I'm not sponsored in any shape or form. It's just my honest opinion as to how the device works out to be. And I think mainly it's due to the convenience of being able to bench unlock my DME anytime at home, as well as the, the amount of time I can do it just in case in the future I want to do a remote software update on the car, the DME will be relocked that I'll have to get unlocked again. Instead of paying someone once again to do it, I can just do it by myself. It's uh, for its convenience as well as I think the ability to back up the current DME state, free of error of course at the moment, as well as to recover the DME off its current state uh, when it's free of error. So that's why I went with mission tuning and link instead of any other devices to get it bench unlocked. And at this point, you can see the masking tape with the number attached to it actually comes in clutch. I don't have to guess which harness goes into which terminal. And after you have connected everything, just give it a light touch to make sure it's actually secured. And then you can see I'm struggling to put the cover back on, but eventually I'll get it. <laughs> and of course, this is the moment of truth when you are starting the car after you have connected your battery, of course. And here goes nothing. It starts. There's no check engine light. I think we are good to go. And as you can see, we're back in my garage and just did a test run to McDonald's to get my iced coffee uh, as well to make sure everything is running fine. Uh, I flashed the car with uh, BM3 Stage 191 Octane multi map on the car. Uh, I also unlocked the DME with the mission tuning M Link at home unlocker. I think I should emphasize the fact that it's it's done at home. You don't have to ship out your DME to or going to a local shop to get it unlocked before you can flash a tune on it. So that's a huge plus. There is like one or two video out there going over how to connect your M Link. Even Mission Tuning themselves haven't released a, a video of how to use the unlocker. They do have step by step instruction on how to get it hooked up and get your DME unlocked but I hope this video was helpful to you going over how to get your DME unlocked with this device I'm not sponsored in any way uh, which I was though um, but this is my un honest opinion on how to use the device and how much I actually appreciate the convenience to be able to do the DME unlock at home so I hope this helped with your decision making on how to get your DME unlocked to be able to flash any tunes on it. And if you have any comments, please do let me know uh, why or why not you may not choose this one or you may choose this one or MHD unlocker over the other one. I'm curious, genuinely curious to know. But that being said, that's it for this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.